Hello everybody, we are reading chapter number 2 from Hornbill, we aren't afraid to die if we can all be together. This is the third meeting of the chapter in question dear students and uh, we are to read from here as you can see on the screen. Let us quickly continue the chapter and see if we can complete it today. So we had read it till here, their situation on January 4 as you can see on the screen. On January 4, I repeat the paragraph to establish it. Uh, on January 4, after 36 hours of continuous pumping, they were all pumping the water out. Now that the situation was somewhere under the control as they had deflected most of the water, now they had to keep pace only with the water coming in. So we reached the last few centimeters of water. Now we had only to keep pace with the water still coming in. We couldn't set any sail on the main mast. Yes, uh, and pressure on the rigging, rigging also I explained to you, uh, the heavy nylon ropes that are used to put the ship on anchor, okay. So pressure on rigging, we could not uh, hoist the sail, the main sail because it would exert a lot of pressure on, uh, on, on the hull part, on the stern and that would put the hull section apart would totally collapse the ship and damage it. So what we did instead of hoisting the mainsail, we hoisted only the storm jib. And we headed for where I thought the two islands were, means towards east. And Mary and Mary found some corned beef and cracker biscuits and we ate our first meal in almost two days. We had read it till here yesterday. Now continuing with it, uh, first I flash myself off the screen. There we go. So, but our respite was very short lived. Yes, the situation was under control, but this was just very temporary. We were in a desperate state again. Because at 4 p.m., black clouds began building up behind us. Within the hour, the wind was back to 40 knots again, and the seas were getting higher and higher again. The weather continued to deteriorate, deteriorate means to worsen, to get even more obnoxious and unfavorable. So throughout the night the weather continued to worsen from what it had been and by dawn on January 5, dawn I told you is early morning the break of the day. On, by dawn on January 5 our situation was again very very desperate. Okay. We were in a quagmire, in a very difficult situation, adverse. When I went in to comfort the children, now this is to be seen, this is where the title of the chapter is coming from, dear students. We aren't afraid to die if we can all be together. So when I went in to comfort the children and to give them, a, to placate them, okay, uh, to soothe them, to motivate them, John asked, the son Jonathan asked, Daddy, are we going to die? He asked so innocently. I tried to reassure him that we could make it and we are not going to die. But he continued to my extreme amazement and surprise that Daddy, we aren't afraid of dying if we can all be together, you and Mummy and Suzanne and I. And I was just beside myself, having got such a response, such a bold response from a child of six years. And that spurred me up, that gave me courage, that gave me energy, that gave caffeine to my spirits and I was ready to face the challenge, to work with even more desperation. I could find no words with which to respond, but I left the children's cabin determined to fight the sea with everything I had. To protect the weakened starboard side, again I tell you, starboard is the right side of the ship and the left side of the ship is called port side. So to protect the weakened starboard side that had become weak due to continuous explosions. Yeah, the waves were lashing towards that side only. I decided to heave to, means to pull up 
with the undamaged port hull facing the oncoming waves now i wanted to i tried to change the direction i decided to change the direction of the ship in a way so that the good part means undamaged part faces the storm or the waves using an improvised sea anchor repaired sea anchor of heavy nylon rope and i also used 222 last liter plastic barrels of paraffin oil i used those as weight so i made this all setting to prevent the boat falling apart that evening mary and i we sat together holding our hands as the motion of the ship brought more and more water in through the broken planks now the wooden planks on the deck on the main floor of the ship they were also broken and we sat together and both of us we felt that our end was very near the boat was near capsizing and we would surely sink and die so we sat together but wave walker rode out of the storm uh, contrary to our expectations we thought we would surely sink and by no way we can make it out but somehow the wave walker the boat the ship rode out of the storm dry means steered clear of the storm by the morning of january 6 and with the wind easing i tried to get a reading on the sextant now sextant is a uh, instrument it's an instrument that is used to measure angular distance dear students okay so back in the chart room i went back to the chart room i checked each and everything with the wind speed the sea current the changes of course drift and current in an effort to calculate our position i finally calculated where we actually were and what was the position right so the best i could determine was what i could make out from my readings was that we were somewhere in one Like fifty thousand kilometers of ocean, such was the diameter of the ocean. And in a one lakh fifty thousand kilometers of ocean, we were looking for a sixty-five kilometer wide island. That's why it was termed as pin pricks in the vast ocean, because against one lakh fifty thousand kilometers of diameter, sixty-five kilometer is just like a pin prick, and it was so difficult to find it. Right? So I checked the current, the drift, and everything, and I. calculated that we were looking for a 65 km wide island while i was thinking all this i was planning so uh, moving painfully joined me there so jane came to me with the left side of her head was now very swollen and her black and eyes narrow means bold big eyes had turned into narrow slits she gave me a card she had made a greeting card for both of us mary and me and what was written on that card you see dear students on the front she had drawn carry catchers now carry catcher is a picture in which a person is uh, person's distinctive features are exaggerated in a uh, in a comical way as you see in comics and cartoons these are carry catchers so she had drawn carry catchers of mary and me with the words written here are some funny faces funny people did they make you laugh and i laughed a lot after many days you see and that was the only objective of suzanne she somehow wanted to had me laugh to have me laugh i'm sorry ha laugh i'm sorry inside there was a message as well as well oh how, how i love you both so what was the message oh how, how i love you both this card is to say thank you and let's hope for the best somehow we had to make it you see the behavior of the children how brash the children were not in the least afraid and they were standing by their parents strengthening them united right i checked and rechecked my calculations we had lost our main compass already 
and I was using a spare compass which had not been corrected for magnetic variations means there was a margin of error so that was not exact accurate or precise but still uh, that would give me at least the faint idea so I was using that compass spare compass that was not precise or accurate I made an allowance for this yes I kept a margin for error and suppose uh, if we have our watch not accurate and it is it shows time past 10 minutes so what we do we check the time and we add or subtract 10 minutes to it this is how we did it I made an allowance for this and another estimate of the influence of the westerly currents which flow through this part of the Indian Ocean I just calculated and estimated all these things the current the effect of the water current the flow of the water the drift and the course of wind everything I checked and calculated and finally having done it I declared I, I, at 2 about 2 p.m. I went on the deck and I asked Larry Larry I think you now know to steer a course of I asked him I directed him to change the course of the ship to steer the ship to a course of 185 degrees and I also told him if we were lucky uh, I told him with a conviction with a kind of confidence though I was not feeling the con that confidence but still I exhibited that I was confident he could expect to see that island at about 5 p.m. if we are right if I'm right in my calculation by 5 p.m. we'll reach that island otherwise prepared to die. I'm sorry again then with a heavy hurt I went below I climbed on my bunk and amazingly I dozed up having uh, passed on the instructions I went to my bunk and I slept I fell asleep dozed off when I woke it was 6 p.m. we were expected to reach the island 5 p.m. It was already 6 p.m. and uh, it was growing dark. Then that, that simply meant that we had missed that island. Now there was no respite. I knew we must have missed the island, and with the sail we had left, we could not beat back into the westerly winds. Winds we could not retract. We could not move in the opposite direction because the ship could not with, withstand the westerly winds. So it was impossible to beat back the waves. We could not move uh, in the opposite direction as ship would not sustain. It would not support at all with most of the uh, part damaged. At that moment a tousled head appeared near my bunk. Tousled head means what? Means uh, untidy with the hair scattered. It was the head of Suzanne obviously. Can I have a hug? No, no, no. Sorry. It was Jonathan. Can I have a hug? Jonathan asked. Suzanne was also right there behind him. The children had come once again to re-energize their father. To give him confidence and energy. Now he asked, totally confused, that I have terribly failed. Why am I getting so much of affection and hug now? Because you are the best dad in the world, they replied, and you are the best captain, the son replied. No, I'm not. I said, I'm afraid I could not save you all. How can I be the best daddy and I can, how can I be the best captain? Why? You must be, said Suzanne in a matter of fact voice. She was uh, quite confident. And she finally declared that, yes, father, we have found the island. Rather, you have found the island. What? I shouted, uh, finding myself incredulous, a little doubting the veracity of the statement of Suzanne. I went myself out there to check, to see for myself, and they, they, they chorused. Means to say simultaneously in unison is to chorus, as big as a battleship. It's out there, yes. I rushed on the deck again and I gazed with relief at the stock out. stock means very very clear undoubtedly there was the outline of uh, the island Amsterdam it was only a small piece bleak piece of volcanic rock with little little vegetation on it 
and it was the most beautiful island in the world obviously for them it was the most beautiful island at that time right it was their life saver we anchored offshore for the night and the next morning all the 28 inhabitants of the island means residents of the island there were some 28 people living on that island they all cheered us uh, as they helped us uh, come ashore they all helped us a lot as well with land under my feet again my thoughts were full of larry and i was continuously I was sitting alone thinking of larry and herbie who always remained cheerful and hopeful under the direst stress the most difficult situation and i was thinking of mary who stayed at the steering wheel for all those crucial hours allowing me to go down and check the children and everything else and most of all i was thinking of the seven year old girl suzanne who did not disclose her injuries to me and later it uh, actually it was a major injury that took six minor operations to remove a recurring blood clot between skin and skull but she did not disclose it and she bore it with confidence and i was thinking of the six year old boy jonathan who was not afraid to die at all so this is the chapter for you dear students Let me flash myself on the screen again there we go uh, now there are some chap questions for you i hope you would love answering these questions having read it in detail it will be an easy peasy task for you guys now so you'll discuss you'll attempt all the questions in your fair notebooks talking about the text as well thinking about the language is definitely to be read and this 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 working words you please uh, use a dictionary note down all the words find out the answers this is the terminology or you may say the jargon So please read it all very very carefully these are the parts of ship if possible draw a label diagram of ship in your fair notebook so this is all for today tomorrow we'll start with another chapter dear students till then have a good day have a good time stay home and stay secure